Just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar, brought to you by Bloke in a Bar, the smoothest Christmas lager in the land, but also brought to you by Renault Cell, because we have the great Josh Mansell, who is a part owner in Renault Cell. Tell us what Renault Cell is. What does it do? Well, thanks for having me, Kempi. It's been a while. No, it's um, been a long time. Yeah, hasn't it? But uh, Renault Cell, just, uh, we give homeowners the opportunity to get the maximum value for their property. So yeah. traditionally, we're renovators, but we've also got experience in real estate. Mm. Um, and also, my other partners are licensed, qualified builders. So yep. um, we'll go in, do the work. If it's landscaping, painting, we're a one-stop shop. We can provide all that for you and um, also offer um, experience um, in the real estate industry. So it's basically like, put, if I'm, I'm trying to sell my house and I'm like, fuck, there's a few things that aren't looking good. This room needs, you know, the paint's chipped and yep. uh, maybe I want to add something here. You go, I, I don't have the cash right now. That's why I'm trying to sell my house. Yep. But if I get 30, 30K or whatever it is to do my house up, when I sell it, that's when I can use that money from mm-hmm. the sale to pay back the... The renovation. That's the biggest part of the business. So we have that pay later option. Yeah. So we'll go in, we'll give an appraisal, uh, we'll give them a scope of work, give them the quote. Yep. If they're happy to go ahead, uh, we'll go um, do the work and um, uh, upon settlement, they'll, our fee will get deducted from that mm. and they don't have to go through the construct, uh, apply for a construction loan at the bank, mm. they don't have to go through the stress, the time and the effort. Um, we kind of sh- uh, take all that load and um, do the yep. work and they're, they're a happy customer. Mate, what, what got you into, you know, that? It, it, it seems like a... It's one of those very niche, or mm. well not niche, because it's a big business, but yeah, it's yeah. a very specific part of the construction business. Oh, you know what? It was, um, it was over dinner one night at the casino. Us four mates were just talking about, you know, the industry, the market, what it's like, and um, I don't know we're just kind of writing all these things down. And yeah, we we're, were able to transform an idea into reality. We saw there was a gap in the market, and not many people were offering that kind of um, service and mm. that experience. And we thought, why not give it a crack? Um, me personally, I was. I've always struggled to kind of figure out my passion and what was what I wanted to do after footy. Yeah. Um, me having a carpentry background, being a qualified carpenter, yeah. obviously construction is something that interests me and uh, us four together kind of just, we just worked. So let's do it. Yeah, and then we gave it a crack. And how, how, how many years has it been? One year now. One year. So we decided to open up. During you passed the dreaded one year. Yeah. The dreaded one year. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially during COVID and all. But uh, mate, it's been such a learning experience. Um, I'm really glad I got into it. And um, mate, yeah, it's something I hope to do long term. It's, it's some, there's some crazy stat of like businesses that don't make it past the first 12 months. Yeah, yeah, I have, um, I have that, heard that. <laughs> I think, and I think like if you can get past five years, you're usually in the clear. So here's to four more years of the best. Knock on wood. Here's knock on wood. And this is a real good custom made table too. So if there's, solid. If, if solid. luck is permeating from anything, it surely is permeating from this table. <laughs> how good. Um, mate, how have you been? Obviously, you know, you've had the off season for quite a while, like for maybe six weeks now. Yep, yep, something like that. Um, What's it been like? What's the off season like been like? Yeah, it's been uh, a lot of catch up to be honest. Yeah. Uh, you know, been obviously f- flown up to Queensland, kind of leaving everything behind. Um, I just bought a house, and three weeks later, I had to move again, and uh, oh, yeah. so that was uh, that was kind of um, taxing. But saying that, I was able to share it with my family up there, which I'm very grateful for. I was able to do what I love um, by playing footy. But um, yeah, mate, it's, uh, it's good that the year's over now. Yeah. There was a lot of a lot of change for me for this year, but uh, now I've got the off season. I kind of relax, kick back a bit, and. Um, uh, I've reflected on the year um, that just happened and hopefully start um, a bigger 2022 season. And so, you know, being a part of the squad that, you know, made the grand final, um, you know, being a part of the, the wider squad, mm. what, what was it like, you know, the build up to that grand final? You, it was just so close, uh, yet so, so far. What uh, was it like? Two years in a row. But <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, I was like losing the grand final with Pan- the Panthers last year. Like they say, it's probably the, the biggest wound you can have. And mm. uh, it definitely hurt at the time. And, um, and, and now, obviously, going to South and <laughs> having to lose against the whole team, obviously, it's cut straight through the bone. But, um, you know, saying that, it was, uh, it was a great two years. And uh, I feel like I was more nervous watching the grand final more than I was playing it last, uh, last year. Uh, yeah, it was definitely a lot of nerves, a lot of emotions, man. Like, I can't even begin to tell you how, how stressful it was. But, um, yeah, you know what? It wasn't meant to be this year for myself and, and for the South boys. But... Um, hopefully we can have a bigger year and go one step further. Yeah, I mean, you got you got the squad. I mean, Renault's a massive loss. Losing Big Renault loss, and obviously yeah. Jaden as well. Yeah, of um, course, of course. But still got a fantastic, still got a great squad. Yeah. Um, so so throughout the year, did you did you guys because you had that big loss? Mm. 
And a lot of people wrote you off. I didn't write you off because I was thinking if anyone can do it, Wayne Bennett can get you yep. get you right. Yep. But then when you lost Trell, I was like, fuck. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to do it, Latrell. Did That's you guys it. feel it internally that you had the squad to push to the grand final, do you think? I feel like the belief was still there, definitely. Uh, we all knew that. We, know, we all know what Latrell offers and what he brings yeah. to the table. You know, he's such a, you know, such a big figure in the game. He's one of the probably... The, for me personally, he's probably the most gifted and raw talented player I've ever I've come across. And yep. um, yeah, you know, it definitely hurt us um, as a team, but we knew that we had Blake Taff um, under him and he'd come in and fill the, fill the job. Probably, I've never seen a rookie come in and play play like that in the final series and, yeah. you know, really make that position his own. So mm. um, yeah, you know what, definitely the belief was there. Everyone kind of lifted even more. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, th- I thought it was an amazing final ser- series yep. for us. And, you know, if, if Latrell played in that grand final, do we win? Maybe, I don't know. But, yep. um, yeah, yeah, you know, losing Latrell was de- definitely hurt us. And what was it like uh, living in the, the bubble this year? Was it a bit better than last year or...? Yeah, very different. Yeah. Uh, last year, being in lockdown, we you know, weren't able to play for, what, one or two months, I think it was. Yep. And there was a lot of uncertainty if the season was going to go ahead and a lot of doubt, um, so a lot of, you know, a lot of shadow. But uh, I think last year, you know, I still kept, everyone still kept training, you know, kept in touch, Try to keep motivating as much as uh, as we we could. Uh, this year, there wasn't really that. Um, I feel like there was still, I feel like the competition was still going to go ahead. If that if that makes yeah, sense, okay. I, I, it was it was I don't know. It was just going to work. But uh, being obviously shipped off um, to Queensland, that was obviously different and unfamiliar territory. And yep. um, having to go through two week quarantine and then having to get the families up for two week quarantine and you reunite. But um, you know what? No one complained. Everyone yep. got got the job done and. Uh, it was almost like a holiday, but it wasn't. We didn't want to get in that holiday mode. That was the biggest trap to set ourselves, but yeah. it was definitely a good time. Definitely. Was it, um, <laughs> did you enjoy being around the boys all, all the time? My, yeah, it was unreal. By the, by the end of it, I just wanted to get away from it, to be, <laughs> <laughs> to be totally honest with you. Uh, but it was a great experience. And yeah, um, oh, yeah very grateful to the NRL and the Queensland government to, to keep, on, keep the show on. Um, so take us back to a young fella. Obviously born in Sydney. Yep. Uh, yep. Of Lebanese and Cuban descent. And Portuguese. And Portuguese. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, so is your father Lebanese and Cuban? Yeah. Is that why it's, it's both? That's right. Yeah. And then your mother, is, is she full Portuguese? Yeah, she's full Portuguese. She comes from a little island off um, the coast of Portugal called Madeira. Oh, really? Madeira, yeah. Um, yeah, so what was it like growing up in uh, Sydney? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, pretty good. I can't complain. Um, you know, grew up uh, in Lakemba for a bit. Uh, lived in Port Campbell, South Coast for a while. Then we uh, kind of cemented ourselves in Elwood, um, yeah. near Marrickville there. I'm not too far from Henson Park. Uh, pretty much grew up around there. Went to St. Therese Primary and then uh, done my high school in Holy Spirit College and uh, grew up with my two younger sisters. Um, pretty much my mum kind of looked after us most, most of her life. Um, she really provided for us. I owe a lot to her um, for the way I am now. And uh, yeah, it's, it was pretty good. I can't complain. Uh, definitely a lot of... A variety in food, obviously being Lebanese and yeah, Portuguese and say, Cuban, oh, right, my culture, culture in the house was, is, it was pretty full, but um, also a lot of cousins, a lot, a lot of cousins come from, uh, my mum comes from six brothers and sisters, same as my dad, so oh, wow. um, yeah, the, the, the family house was definitely full. Definitely <laughs> oh full. man, um, was it always, so growing up, was it always rugby league for you or did you yeah. try other sports? Uh, I started soccer actually, uh, got to the age of 10 and all my, you know, all my neighbours and my mates around the neighbourhood um, all played rugby league, so yep. I kind of grew, grew to love the game there. Uh, all my dad's side, mad Bulldog supporters, mm. so I've lost, a, 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 been, a, been a kid growing up, especially around the Belmore area, I was a mad Bulldog supporter. Yep. Um, and I don't know, I got the taste of playing rugby league, just playing with the boys and um, I you know, shared the, the heartbreaking news to my family um, that I wanted to play, switch over from soccer to rugby league. And yeah. my dad was very reluctant at the time, but my mum was more like, you know, I'll let him do what he wants. Um, he probably won't, won't enjoy it when he you know, gets the first taste <laughs> of it, but yeah. obviously it was quite the opposite. Loved playing rugby league. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, as a kid, I was just had this thing ingrained in my brain that I just wanted to make the NRL, wanted to play in the NRL. Yeah. And I wasn't anywhere near the most talented player. Uh, I feel like it was my effort, enthusiasm and... Um, Probably just my perseverance, like it really got me to where I am today. Mm. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. I was, I was very lucky. I kind of got knocked back a few times as a kid growing up. Um, it was the Canterbury Juniors or the St. George Dragons Juniors. And uh, I remember I was just, uh, just you know, doing my, my business. I think it was a uh, uh, first year apprentice at the time or second year apprentice. And uh, I, got, I got a call to go try out for the North Sydney Bears. It was just open tryout. Mm. Uh, I ended up going on the day, I think it was at like TJ Milner and North Ride. Mm. Rocked up with my mum, and um, I rocked as I rocked up. Like everyone was there with like their mates, and yeah. I was 
I was shy as <laughs> I just w- walked in there, you know, just didn't mind my own business and we played like three mini games. And um, after that, my name was the first one picked. And, oh, really? Um, yeah, I was pretty wrapped. Uh, I was pretty much my first time I got picked in, in representative football. And yep. um, my mum was definitely very, very excited. I did a preseason at North City Bears and uh, Mark Hughes, who was the recruitment officer at Souths, um, gave me the ultimatum. Did I want to play for Souths in the 20s mm. or did I want to keep playing in the reserve grade for the Bears? And... Um, I think being affiliated with the South's brand and the club yeah. um, appealed to me more. Um, so I decided to give under twenties a crack. Yeah, and I was very lucky to um, to have done that. You know, I played with you know, Reno, uh, played with Junior Viva, who played a bit of um, NRL. You know, Kane Morgan, James Roberts, uh, Nathan Peets. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of oh, Josh Starling. Yeah, so a lot of guys that uh, come out of that twenties system um, went on to play rugby league and yep. NRL. Um, so yeah, it was a very good time coming growing up. And so. You got cut from the county bulldogs and you mm. also you couldn't make the saint george side mm. do you remember you know what they said to you to cut you or do you just didn't get the call back to come in or no it wasn't really given much of a detailed reason mm. uh it was just you know what well, this is the this is the team and um thanks everyone for you know contributing this pre-season yeah, but okay. um uh yeah we wish you all the best that's pretty much that how was it, went. it. That, that, that was like was speaking to a group of people pretty much pretty much yeah it was a it was a big kick in the guts as a kid um growing up but um yeah, it didn't, didn't turn me one bit. You know, I just I knew what I wanted. I knew what I wanted to do. And um, I think, I, if anything, I worked even harder to kind of, you know, make those junior rep sides. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so did that, when you, so when you get cut, mm. were you thinking, because it's got to smash your confidence. Oh, huge, hugely. And, and so what, what were you thinking in that, in that period? Were you like, I'm just going to, you know, try for any team that will take me or? Uh, not really, because I didn't feel like I had the access to, to do that. Um, yeah. I gave... Uh, the Canterbury comp a couple more years. I tried giving the SG, uh, tried playing a few more years to try and make SG ball, but that didn't work out. So I went to play for Kingsgrove Colts for a year and uh, were able to make the grand final, but we I think we lost by a try or two points that game. Um, no, you don't have luck in grand finals, oh, bro. Tell me about that's free. <laughs> Far out. I've won a few, but no, no one knows about them. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, and then yeah, what else? I just yeah, I kind of it did give me a kick in the guts, but I wanted to kind of. I don't know. It was just something, like, like I said, it's just something in my brain that just didn't want to take no for an answer. I don't know yeah. if it was just me being stubborn or me being naive, but um, you know, I had school teachers saying, you know, maybe it's not the right thing to do. You mm. know, like kind of again, more people telling me maybe you're not fit for to play in the NRL, and yep. um, yeah, yeah, no, and I just didn't want to take no for an answer. I was just, Mate, I just wanted good. to make it. It's good you didn't. We wouldn't have the source in the NRL. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been all lesser men for it. Um, Okay, so so you go and you try off North Sydney Bears. You mm. play. Did you play one season there? Not even. Uh, I think I played a couple of games, maybe yep. at North. And, and then was um, that New South Wales Cup? Yeah. Yep. Wow. So, you, so, so eighteen year old playing fullback. Yeah. Yeah. We're playing fullback. Playing fullback. Yeah. No uh, pa- No pass. Just show <laughs> and go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So you you just rocked up to a random trial for the yeah. cup, the cup the cup side. Yeah. Wow. Right yeah. Out. I think it was uh, six or seven boys that got picked out of ah how many. Maybe ninety kids, hundred wow. people. Wow! Wow! Um, yeah, so that was um, yeah, that was pretty cool. <coughs> it's pretty cool. And so, yeah, so you're eighteen years old. You're are you doing your carpentry at that? Yeah, hey, I was still working. Yeah, still. Yep. Uh, especially, I think back then, um, it was really it wasn't forced to, but they really um, they heavily advised us to make sure we had something to back. Um, you know, if rugby league wasn't to happen, um, that you had something to fall back on. And yep. so I chose carpentry to finish that, and yep. I did that to I completed that when I was twenty or twenty one. Mm. Uh, and then when I was 22, I decided to leave South and, and uh, take an opportunity with Penrith, which I was on a full-time contract there. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was able to debut that year, which was uh, very lucky. So you played under 20s for two years at South? Yep. And did they just, did you get offered a contract to stay or did they say, look, it's not? Uh, I was only a uh, uh, summer pre-season contract. Yeah. Um, whenever I had the opportunity to kind of train with the first grade side, um, I, I always asked to, and um, I was very lucky enough to have that, given the opportunity, but um, I had to cut time off work um, and obviously train for free, basically. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, just try to get some experience and rub shoulders with the with the, with the older lads. And um, yeah, that, and then obviously at the end of that year, I didn't really get much of a look in, and I wasn't given a, a new contract. Yep. So got my manager and told me to, well, is there anything out there? And I remember Gus had a look at me when I was playing at North. Actually, I think it was Freddie. Actually, Freddie um, scouted me sort of and told Gus about me. And yep. Gus had a bit of a, a look at me and watched a bit of my tape and. Uh, we had a meeting with him and 
The rest is history. Really? Yeah. Far so right I, was, out. Yeah, I remember. I remember how dirty that meeting was. You know, yeah, meeting yeah. big Gus. You know, is a obviously a big figure in the game. And yep. I'm, you know, just me like a young kid coming through. Yep. Like, <laughs> Where'd yeah. Where'd you meet him? I met him at Panthers. Yeah. At Panthers. Yeah, yeah. So I gave me a bit of a tour around the around the place where, where everyone trains and uh, a bit of the town. I I didn't really have much to do with Penrith um, yep. growing up. So. Um, yeah, I was very grateful that I had the opportunity because Perth is a really, really tight knit community and yep. um, uh, awesome fan base. They really get behind their team, and mm. um, I'm, I'm lucky I had nine seasons there. So, when you you you're in the under twenties for the Rabbitohs, mm. when you rock up to the first grade training, was there any period where you're like? Did you feel like you were at their level? Do you know what I mean? Like, because you couldn't get a contract with them, but Penrith obviously thought you were. Mm. Did you feel like you were at their level? Or? So my time at my time at South, like I, I don't know if it was um, a belief thing or uh, I was a bit starstruck to be honest. Like I'm rubbing shoulders with like you know Sam Burgess, Greg Inglis, yep. uh, Dave Taylor who was absolutely killing it at the time, yeah, Reese Wesser, um, big names. You yep. know what I mean? And uh, I don't know if I, I saw other guys getting a, like the jump ahead of me, like. Uh, Kane Morgan debuted, and James Roberts debuted, Dylan Farrell debuted, and um, I find I, I kind of felt to myself, I go, maybe, maybe I'm not, maybe they, just, they don't believe in me, yeah, um, the way I believe in myself. So uh, it got to a point where I'm like, you know what, I've got to, I've got to look elsewhere. Similar yeah. to what happened to me um, as a kid growing up, mm. uh, Penrith was that, um, that, that place, that opportunity, and uh, it was probably the, the perfect timing as well because Ivan took over the same year, and okay. it was kind of fresh like a re fresh start, rebuild, yep. and Penrith was the perfect destination for myself, and. Yep. I remember when I was signed there, you know, I'm looking at the depth, depth chart and having to look at who the outside backs were. And I remember it was like probably like the seventh choice winger when wow. I got there. It was that many people. It was like probably 50, I think it was a 50 man preseason squad. Wow. Ridiculous. Yeah, that's way too big. There was uh, uh, Michael Gordon, um, uh, Sandal Earl, Etu Uwasili, um, Malcolm uh, Watini was there as well. Uh, myself, there was, I think Jeff Daniela played a couple of games on the wing, Junior T. Khalifi. Um, uh, and David Simmons. Wow. Oh, that's, there's eight of us there. Wow, like, Eight wingers. Out. Like, it's just, um, yeah, so I just, yeah, when I got there, I kind of changed my mindset. I just, I'm there for a fresh start. I'm not going to think about um, when I'm going to get, get picked to play in NRL. I just want to do my best every time I get, the, uh, get that chance, if it's yep. training, if it's playing. And um, I played a few games at Windsor Wolves. Uh, we did, we were doing pretty well at the start of the season. And then I think it was round seven, um, I made the call to um, to give him to give him my debut jumper, yeah. and it was against Melbourne Storm oh, no. <laughs> at home. No, so, no. Uh, but I didn't figure it that way. I was just so grateful to, to, to give to be given the opportunity and um, to obviously make my NRL debut. Yeah. Mate, that was like the best one of the best weeks of my life. Like, it's so good. At I'm it. sure it's you so know good. the feeling. Yep, so, yep. Um, um, yeah, it was good. So, you remember any? Do you remember any training sessions with the first grade squad? where you really realised, oh, far out, like this is first grade, like the intensity or blokes just going. Yeah, when I first joined the South, uh, 2011, um, I played junior, um, the junior kangaroos and I had a bit a bit longer time off and mm. I re reunited with the squad and everyone was up at Coffs Harbour mm. um, for a training camp. So yeah. I went straight into that. Straight into that, getting oh. to, into a camp, getting absolutely flogged. Yeah, yeah. Lactate City, my legs were blown up by the end of the <laughs> week, but, um, uh, yeah, like that was probably, that was probably the biggest hit in the face. Like I, I, I don't think I handled it the best I could have. Yeah. Um, but I made sure that I did whatever I could to be prepared for the preseason um, at Penrith, and yep. uh, I felt I felt like I definitely handled that better than I did yep. my first my first preseason. With I sales. think a lot of rookies struggle from that. You know, that mm. first preseason just blows you up. Like it literally yeah. just blows you up, and, yeah. it, and they, it's like they kind of do it on purpose to like rebuild you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. Anyway, so yeah, that the the 2012 rolls around. You get, you get named to make your debut. How did that conversation happen? Did you, did he, you know, how did you find out you were going to That's pretty funny, actually. Um, I've never been the best with time. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I was driving, uh, I, was, I, I, I didn't really make the move to Penrith. I was still commuting where I was living. Yep. I, I was living with my mum at the time. So it was taking me a, probably an hour and a bit to, to get to training. And I used to take the M5, M7 back on the M4. So it used to cost <laughs> me a fortune in toll. Oh, right. But um, uh, I remember I was driving to training and I was on the highway and um, my tire popped. And the worst thing you could do, especially as a kid, is call up your coach and tell me you're late to training, right? Yeah, so um, yeah. I end up calling Ivan. I'm like, hey, mate, I'm just on the side of the road. I'm changing my tire. I'll probably be a bit late to get to, get to training. He's like, oh, how, how long will you be? I'm like, mate, I don't know. Probably probably 20 minutes, 20 minutes late. And he's yeah. like, okay, no worries. Got my tire back on, uh, continued my, my, my route. And then um, he called me back. I'm like, mate, I'm really sweaty at this yeah, point. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, mate. And he's like, mate, Listen, you're gonna be late, so I'm just gonna tell you now. You're making your debut this week. Oh. 
really? I'm like, oh, thanks, thanks, Ivan. Thanks for the opportunity. And like, you know, full groveling. And um, uh, as soon as I hung up, mate, I was just yelling on top of my lungs. I was pumping the music in the car. I was like, one of the best feelings ever, yeah, yeah. ever. Did you think he was ringing you up to blow up? Yeah, yeah that's, that was my first, yeah, uh, my first yeah. instinct. And yeah. then I, I remember calling my mum as well. And uh, she was crying on the phone and um, called my dad. He was crying on the phone. And um, uh, it was one of the best feelings ever. And when I got there, I, you know, I've got, got to the elevator, went up to, to the next level and I, I walked into the meeting and all the boys were getting up and cheering yes. me on. And my, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. It was just, yeah, it was one of the best weeks of my life. Mate, absolutely. So do you remember anything specifically from the game? Um, I had a bit of a running with Will Chambers that game, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, yeah, probably my debut try, um, Lukey Lewis trying to cut out pass to me and I just pinned my ears back and I just, just looked at the corner. I didn't, didn't look at anything else and I remember yeah. diving five metres out and me being able to score, um, not only my first try, but it was right in, in front of my friends and family. No got, way. And I was... Yeah, it was just... Uh, it's a dream. It was, it, was, it was in euphoria. Euphoria. Right. The scoreline told a different story, <laughs> but uh, mate, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was stoked that I was able to um, have a decent game and um, yeah, play in front of my family and friends. Um, and you named uh, Panthers Rookie of the Year, played 14 matches, scored seven yeah. tries. Are you, do you get a lot of confidence from that year? Thinking far out, like I'm not only am I playing first grade, mm. but I'm, I'm playing decent footy. Massive confidence, mm. yeah. Um, probably at the, yeah, the back end of the year, it was pretty... I was like, Jesus, like I didn't really think my first year of um, rugby league was gonna go go like that. Like yeah. um, I was obviously I built a very good partnership with um with Jenko on, on that left edge there and um yeah, just I was very, very yeah, reflecting on that year, I was so lucky to have give, been given the opportunity firstly, but to obviously finish that year in, in so strongly yeah. being my first year. So Absolutely. But saying that, like at that back of the year probably got a bit bit comfortable with myself. Like I remember yeah. I'm a big person when it sets in terms of setting goals and stuff yeah and so once i i've ticked that box playing nrl i didn't really sit myself down and like reflect and go okay what's next yeah. like what do i want to what, what goals i want to set myself next and that following year still had a good pre-season but probably was a bit slack wasn't as uh regimen and um strict on myself as, as i was the year before yeah. and um you know i tweaked i had a few injuries the following year you know got ahead of myself Probably the biggest thing I could, the biggest thing I taught myself was never get comfortable with self, never yeah. like set a ceiling for yourself, always try to get better and better and better. And um, yeah, that 13 season probably was a big learning curve for me. And uh, that 14 year was, uh, was one, of, one of the best years I was involved with Penrith. We were able to um, go to the semis and just got knocked off by the Bulldogs, but um, was also made, uh, able to play for the Kangaroos later that year. And yep. um, yeah, it was a pretty good year for myself. So 2000, uh, 2013 though, you signed a, a contract extension? Yep. 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 Was that was that like the feeling of like finally getting an okay contract? Yeah, you know? yeah, that was awesome. Oh, that was a sigh of relief. But um, yeah, just I remember just being just so grateful, so humbled, and just because I, I, mean, I, this is what I worked so hard for as a kid. Yep. You know, since yep. I was ten years old, I had this thing in my head that I wanted to play rugby league. I mm. wanted to play in the NRL, and um, to kind of really cement myself and achieve that. Yep. Um, yeah, it was that was it was huge for me, for, for myself. And so 2014, um, you're playing the nines, uh, and you re-sign again, again yep. um, to the end of uh, 2016 after Canberra Raiders came and mm. had a look. So walk us through <laughs> that. What happened with that? I think um, Teddy kind of uh, takes most of that. Uh, I, I remember flying um, to Canberra with Teddy and uh, my manager and... Um, it's James Tedesco. James Tedesco, if yeah. no one knows that. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we had a, you know, met Ricky, uh, the CEO at the time, and... Uh, they gave us a bit of a tour of the facility, the tour of Canberra. Um, and I didn't say yes or no at that point. Uh, yeah. I, you know, like I, I remember speaking back and forth with Teddy. I'm like, what are you going to do? Are you going to sign there? You know, like, I don't know. I got, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on with me and my family. I, I don't think I can make the move. But yeah. uh, I think Teddy actually said yes. But I, I, <laughs> I, remember, I remember having the meeting with Gus in the stadium and um, my, Gus was telling me, you've got to sign this deal. Like, you've got to take it. Like, this is, oh, really? is life-changing for you. And I'm like, mate, I, go, I can't do it. Like, I, I love this place too much to go. Like, yep. I'm a pretty loyal person, I like to think. Like, yeah. I'm very loyal to my mates and um, I'm extreme, I was extremely loyal with Penrith. Um, I, I never, like I said before, I never took them giving my debut jumper for granted. Like, mm. I, I really love the community. I love the fans. I love the club. And I really wanted to repay that by signing another uh, signing there. And yeah. it was much less than what Canberra offered. And 
um, mate, it was just me and Gus in the stadium, and I go, mate, just just make it work for me. Just make yeah. it work. I, I know how tight it is the, with the cap and whatever, and I know this is a massive opportunity to go to Canberra, but I don't want to leave. Like, I was so adamant I didn't want to leave. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, while he went back and kind of made it work, and uh, I remember having a word with Ivan, go, mate, I'll sign it. I'm happy. Yeah. And, like, we shook hands and, you know, we gave, gave each other a hug and, uh, I remember having to make the call to, to Ricky and that's another tough conversation I had to make, but yep. I wanted to give him the respect that he deserves because he's, you know, he's a very respectable guy and uh, yep. I was very appreciative of him showing me that interest. And I told him one, two and three, mate, I, I wanted to stay loyal with Penrith. Um, I want to stay, stay around my family at the time. <coughs> and um, he, mate, he totally understood and respected yeah, me calling totally. him and have that tough conversation with him. Yep. And Ricky would, R- Ricky would understand that. He would probably even respect that because, you know, that's the kind of bloke he is. Mm. Um, so that year as well, you play... Uh, on the wing for the Prime Ministers. Mm. Um, and you finished the year as the highest try scorer, 15 tries and 22 matches. So like 2014 is some of the best form you've ever had. Mm. Um, what was it like going over to Papua New Guinea to play Papua New Guinea? Everyone knows like they're footy mad over there. It's like yeah. religion. Yeah. Um, but mate, they're just built like brick houses. They're yeah. just, they're, they were just so passionate and just, um, yeah, I remember taking a couple of runs and getting wind, absolutely winded from it. So yeah. uh, it was a good game. It was so hot. The field was dry. But to play in front of those fans, it was probably one of the highlights of my career because I was just so loud. Yeah. They're so passionate. And as a footy player, like the fans are the game, you know, like yeah. you running into a, a packed stadium, cheering you on if it's, you know, if it's getting sledged or if it's, you know, they're cheering your name on or it's like it's all part of the experience um and so yeah i was definitely lucky to to share that experience over there and um to even just to visit the country you mm. know like um i heard a lot of good things about it it's a beautiful country and um to experience that it was uh, yeah it was really rewarding um just for, quickly before i forget <laughs> when when um i just i just thought of something when you said no to the raiders did you call teddy and be like Sorry, bro. I going. told him. Yeah, I definitely yeah. told him, one hundred percent. But uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what what conversation you had uh, with Ricky after that. But um, Ricky would have been fuming. <laughs> mate, oh, uh, yeah. If, uh, he ended up, I don't know. I don't know how long he was signed with the Tigers after that. But he obviously uh, made the move to the Roosters, which yeah. is probably was one of the best decisions <laughs> he's ever made. Great, great decision. <laughs> great decision. Um, Okay, so yeah, you play. Do you remember anything from the Papua New Guinea, like uh, people running on the field, or one of the boys getting mobbed, or? Um, I remember, yeah, I remember every time we got on the bus, like we were in the resort, and it's like fully fenced off, and we had all the fans outside my room, and um, whatever gear I had, I remember I used to just throw it over, and like, mate, they just jump on it, they were just, they were just footy mad. Um, I remember tasting the the local product, beetle beetle nut. Yeah, what's it like? <laughs> if anyone doesn't know about that, it kind of gives you a bit of a. I don't know how to explain it, but it makes, <laughs> it makes you feel a bit funny. But uh, that was a good experience to have with the boys. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, just the, the experience of being able to like see the kids there and, um, you know, <laughs> taking off my, like, my footy gear and giving it to them and see how much that meant to them. Like, um, mm. yeah, it puts, really, puts a lot of things in perspective, like how lucky we are to actually live in this country we are in and yep. um, given the opportunity to play rugby league as well. So. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So that same year, though, you, uh, you make your debut. Uh, for Australia, yeah, against New Zealand, yeah, all nations. The Kiwis won thirty to twelve, though. Yeah, but you score your first try on the green and gold. Yep. Okay. Oh, sorry, against Samoa. Yeah. Um, yep. But what was it like? You know, did, getting the call up for the Australian side. Do you remember that phone call, or do you remember how it happened at all? I don't. Uh, I, yeah, the phone call is a bit vague, to be honest. Oh, actually, no. Nah. <laughs> I do remember the phone call. <laughs> Let's go back. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm on. Um, Bad Monday, and um, <laughs> I'm, with a, I'm with a couple of boys, and uh, it's early in the morning, and um, I see my phone ring, and it's it's Phil Gould. And I'm like, look, showing the boys. I'm like, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the time. I'm like, ah. anyway, he's probably checking up on us. So, I answer the phone. I'm like, hey mate, he's like, hey, miss, hey mate, what are you doing? I'm like, and all the boys are like. <laughs> just, 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 I'm like, oh, mate, I've just seen the room. I'm um, just having a few drinks with the boys and uh, ended up naming all of them. And um, everyone's just like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I just have to be honest with him. And he didn't care. So he just, and uh, he goes, mate, I've got something to tell you. I'm like, I go, oh, what's that? He goes, uh, I've just got a phone call. I'm like, from who? I'm thinking, um, from the NRL. I'm like, mm-hmm. for what? He's like, mate, you got picked to play in the, uh, the, uh, the Australian squad. And I was like, F-. I'm like, no way! Oh, yeah. God, how good's that? All the boys are jumping up, and yep. um, yeah, that was a that was a pretty pretty cool moment. And um, 
yeah man to uh to share that with the boys as well like who you know shared the ride with me all yeah. year and uh yeah it was uh it was did, you, cool. did you pack up shop then or did you have a few more drinks and stay with the boys I had a few more drinks. <laughs> I probably got another leg, to be honest. But uh, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a it was a mad day. It was a mad day to be around the boys, especially yep. um, when I got that news. So. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so do you when you, you made your debut for Australia? Do you remember anything from the game at all? Uh, I remember the the week leading up to it. Um, you know, rubbing shoulders with like you know the go to rugby league, like Cooper Cronk. Um, I was able to, to play with Jenko as well, who are, he's one of my best mates as well. That was pretty special. Um, you know, all these big names, you know, like as a kid, that's what you, you strive to, to be a part yeah. of, you know what I mean? Like pay, playing in the green of gold is probably the, the pinnacle in the rugby league. And mm. to begin with the opportunity, it was just, um, mate, it was, I was over the moon. I, was, I enjoyed the ride. Don't remember too much about the week, but um, playing in, uh, I can, being in, in front of the hucker for the yeah. first time, um, knowing what that was like and... Um, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Do you, um, what do you reckon you learnt from some of the better players in that squad, some of the more experienced players? Did you learn about professionalism? Or? Yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah, especially from, I took, I took a lot of, um, out of Cooper Cronk, um, such a professional, um, always putting the team first, um, like preparing for every single game, um, just making sure that he plays the best every single game. If it's, if it's the way he ate, it's the way he trained on the field, always trying to get his extras in, being, being one of the last on the field and, um, yeah, I really learned a lot of coops, and yeah. uh, I was lucky enough to take a field with him. Um, on, on, do you remember anything on the field other than the hucker? Any 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 contact uh, collisions? Were you? Uh, I remember having that? a bit of a running with uh, 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 with Joey Leilua against Samoa. Um, uh, we almost we almost <laughs> stuck, we had each other by the collar, and yeah. um, we almost <laughs> started swinging at each other. But when I, I don't know, I kind of I, I, we. For me, for some reason, me and Joey, every time we we play against each other, we want to rip each other's heads off. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, we're just two competitive beasts. And yeah. um, uh, I remember uh, he was at Marco and I was able to st- do a bit of a shimmy and I ended up um, breaking through. And that's how I scored my first try against yeah, Samoa yeah. that game. But um, yeah, I remember... I remember just, I think the biggest thing was the experience, like putting on the yeah. green and gold jumper. I think that was pretty cool. I yeah. remember, that, I remember uh, the boys playing a bit of a prank on Timmy Sheens. Uh, they <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember like, they we ended up hiding his um, his luggage bag and they put it in one of the lockers in, in the, the team room. And um, the next day, like he had nothing but his like suit to wear. Like he was rocking <laughs> up at breakfast in his suit. His suit. <laughs> oh, by the same bloody undies he was wearing. Oh, it was so funny. So but what they did, they took his... His, his whole luggage. The whole and he, luggage. And he hit it. I think it was Corey Parker and uh, Sammy Thayde. It was hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. And like Tim Shea is like, he's like pretty like... Straight arrow. Straight arrow. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, like he don't he doesn't really crack so that he, many jokes. He rocked, up to, <laughs> he rocked up to breakfast in a suit. Oh, it was hilarious. Mate. It was How hilarious. good is that? Oh, what, what did he? What did he? Like, what did the boys say? Oh, I don't know where your stuff is. Or? Uh, I think the, eventually they cracked it, but uh, but like for the night that they did, he didn't have his stuff. Yeah, what, I know. What did he, they just like, oh, we must the, have lost your stuff. We must have lost his luggage, and then just miraculously turned up. So <laughs> oh I don't God. know if he, I don't know if to this day he knows who took it, but now if he listens to this, he does. <laughs> um, far out. So he's walking around thinking it's all lost, and the boys oh, are just hilarious. geeing up, bloody hilarious, rocking up in his suit, <laughs> oh everywhere. It was us. Oh, um, pretty funny. Okay, so so that yeah, you obviously make that side um, by this stage because like this is pretty quick in your career. Your debut two thousand twelve mm. by two thousand fourteen, you're playing for your country, mm. um, and so at that point you sign the the deal with uh, the Panthers, but mm. you're also getting into a point where you'll be beca- you're the best winger, in the, one of the best wingers in the game. You're mm. becoming well known. What's that that uh, process like for you going from a guy two years ago that you know, the South weren't interested in mm. to a guy that everyone knows, everyone loves the way they play. You know what I mean? What's that like? Oh, it happened so fast, like you said. And I remember uh, I just couldn't believe I was playing for the green and gold that, that, that early in my career. Mm. Um, I don't know. It was just like, I didn't, I don't know, not that I didn't believe in myself, but I didn't feel like I was going to get that far yeah. in my rugby league career. Um, obviously, we made just making, just making like, you know, the North Sydney Bears tryouts, just getting picked to play in the South Sunday 20s, getting re- knocked back. I don't know. I don't know if I just didn't believe in myself. I should have believed in myself, but um, yeah, just, um, just like, just happened like that. I don't know. It's just, it was, it was just really bizarre how it happened. I didn't really foresee how, like, how obviously it was going to happen, but um, yeah, mate, just, for me, be given that chance to, to play in the green and gold itself before playing Origin was a bit different as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it was um, well, it was a hell of a ride. I tell you that. And so, 2014 is also you made you had a pretty good run as well. Penrith Panthers, you get yeah, to the yeah. semis. Yeah, yeah, I remember um, 
That was a great year. And, you know, you scored... What, what was your favourite try so far in your career at that point? Because you scored some pretty good tries. Uh... Probably against the Bulldogs, uh, 2016 in the prelim. That yep. was um, that was pretty cool. That was a that was a great game, and uh, probably that Roosters, Roosters try as well. I, I played against the Roosters 2014 in the prelim as well. Yep. Going over there, that was a massive game. I remember that that week. Um, no one gave us a chance in hell. We were battered and bruised. Uh, Roosters minor prem, star started team, and playing at Allianz Stadium at their home and. Um, us coming back the way we did to win that game and Sowie to kick that field goal, yep. freak. Yep. Kick the kick the sideline for conversion as well to level it up. Mate, it was one of, probably one of the best games I've been involved in. Yeah, I'll yeah. Never, never, ever forget it. Walk it us through the feeling on the field. Like, cause you, did you score an important was, try? Yeah, I think I yep. scored the first try in that game. Yep. Um, I just I remember the, the, the crowd going up. Um, there was only a small um, part of um, Panther supporters, obviously. <laughs> it was full of Rooster supporters that, that night. and. Um, I, it honestly felt like the Panther supporters were louder than the Roosters supporters at, uh, at some point. Um, and yeah, to win, to come away with that win, it was just, everyone yeah. was just hugging. Oh mate, it was just euphoria. Like <laughs> yeah. We were just on cloud nine. It was, yeah. it was unbelievable. Just to be the underdog and obviously to chance the Roosters that game, it was like, yeah, it was pretty special. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 2015 rolls around. Um, oh, one of the worst years it, ever. <laughs> sorry? One of the worst years ever that year. Well, I was going to say, mm. is this the year also that Ivan gets moved on? Yeah, yeah. At the end of the year. Yeah, end of that year. Yeah, yeah. And so walk us through that year because like there was so much drama at the club too, like surprising drama that didn't mm. like it just kind of looked like it came out of nowhere. I'm not sure if it did. Yeah, yeah. What was the year like for you, mate? Roller coaster, the biggest roller coaster ever. Like in terms of injuries, everyone was getting injured left, right, and centre. Um, you know, it was yeah, it was just a weird, bizarre year, man. <laughs> um, I remember, I don't know, if, I think the last game of the year we were fighting out, fighting out for the spoon against Newcastle at home, and wow, um, yeah, it was just even. Ivan getting sacked at the end of the year was a, was a surprise to all of us, you know? Yeah. Like, it just happened so abruptly. And, um, you know, I remember messaging him. I think it was in Fiji at the time when I got the news with my wife. Um, I actually proposed. Uh, well, yeah, I got, I got engaged. <laughs> when I, and I think it was the next day I found out the news. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it was, I remember messaging him, just, you know, tell him, you know, I'm going to miss him and that. And um, I'm sure all the boys, you know, got around to him. And, uh, yeah, just, yeah, it was a really, really bizarre year. Yeah. Even for myself, I got, I, I, I tweaked my medial twice that year and didn't really get that much game time and um for me personally it was probably like the lowest year in my career yeah okay just one of those tough years where nothing just, goes yeah, right nothing nothing yeah. at all and nothing you can you can train your ass off and just the bounce of the ball is just not it going feels like way. the harder you work and the harder you train like the hole was just getting deeper yeah 100 yeah, uh, yeah it was, that's how and like that's advice i'm sure that you probably give young fellas now mm. like obviously you need to train hard but mm. sometimes you need to just take a step back yeah 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 enjoy your footy be happy again yeah because yeah. like you're right like sometimes when you're working hard you're just getting more more angry more frustrated yeah. and you just you can't get past that i think that happens because when you're like on a losing run like the harder you work the harder you train like it's just it gets more frustrating because like i'm working hard i'm doing my extras i'm yeah. i'm meeting the right stuff i'm trying i'm training the absolute house down but the results aren't changing yeah absolutely um and that's when i think the frustration comes into play and um that's when you know kind of that's when, as, as well, like you start getting chinks in your armor, like you start taking corners, you start getting slack, not not taking things seriously, and yep. um, I think that's the hardest thing as a coach to kind of keep the group together mm. as, as much as you can. Um, I think Wayne's really good at that. He is at probably like the best, when you yeah. when you think everyone's down and out and you're feeling like shit, yeah. and then he he finds a way to like break the cycle. Hundred percent. Just have fun, boys. Just enjoy yourself. At the mm. end of the day, it's just footy. Mm. I think a lot of the younger coaches struggle with that. They think. We gotta go harder. We gotta yeah. go harder. Yeah. Whereas sometimes you've got to break that yeah. the cycle. Mm. Um, okay, so 2016 rolls around. Uh, you make your debut for New South Wales City. Um, what was that? You know, get called up for that, and then you get Pretty selected cool. in New South Wales squad. Mm. What, what was that like? Because that's it. Australia's the dream. Yeah, but like Origin, Origin. bro. Yeah, holy, I know. Holy. Yeah, like that's a that's a, like a completely different beast. Um, I remember getting picked for the City team, and that was a great. That was one of the best weeks ever. Oh, really? Like, being coached by Freddie as well. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was a, an awesome week. I, even with that that team, I think he just we he just put a team together on paper. Like we well, like there was heaps of blokes pulling out injuries, and uh, country was just fully stacked, fully yep. stacked. And um, we went in that week, and no one really took any notice of that like yeah. we, we we enjoyed ourselves we trained hard when we had to tr when we had to um we partied hard when we when we had to <laughs> and um I, I remember the tuesday night uh we we got together we he's, he's got this thing where we um go down to i think it's uh Woolloomooloo, mm. and uh we feed the poor uh get to meet a few of the fellas in the, in the locals in the area and that was pretty humbling as well that yep. was pretty cool and, and then after we would go have dinner together have a drink together and yeah 
I remember getting into his ear. I go, mate, I go, there's no, there's no real atmosphere here. Do you reckon we can like move it somewhere else? Yeah, I go, yeah. I know somewhere up the road. And he's <laughs> like, he goes, go up, go up there, give it a crack, and uh, see how you go. Yep. So I ended up getting Nathan Brown with me. Yep. And uh, we went up the road. I, I spoke to the security guards at the front. I go, mate, I've got like 30 blokes here, and yeah. we're, we're here. We're here to have a, you know, just a drink in that. And yeah. he's like, mate, all sorted. We'll give you your area, and um, yeah, bring them all up. Yeah. I'm like. Got on the photo, Freddie. I'm like, mate, we did it. Get your ass here. Like, <laughs> let's, let's do it. It's yeah. salsa night. <laughs> okay, it's the best we can do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was at the establishment, and then uh, yeah, everyone come in, and mate, it was one of the funniest nights ever. One Fuck, of the best nights ever. That? Yeah, how it was just that? boys are trying to salsa that. <laughs> <laughs> it was all time, and I think it became a bit of a trend with Freddie. He actually quite enjoyed it. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we yeah, were playing. I think it was in Tamworth, and uh, that was a, yeah, just an awesome game. Everything just happened for us that day, and yeah. we ended up smacking um, country in that that game. Oh, really? Yeah, then you didn't have the stack side as well. Yeah. Um, what about your debut for New South Wales? Walk us through the phone call, how it all happened, how it come together. Mate, yeah. The, um, the phone call, I think it was Jason Wrigley, um, my football manager at Penrith, that gave yeah. me the news, broke the news to me. And uh, again, yes, I was absolutely buzzing over the moon, called, got on the phone, called my family, my friends, and everyone was just, um, just cheering for me. And uh, I remember going into camp, it's like it was such a long week with like media commitments and um, obviously to train and you know, team team dinners and just so just so packed, man. So yeah. full on, so full on. And even like the every time I don't really try, I try my best not to kind of like look at headlines or read the papers yeah. or stuff like that. But the pa- they're just full, like you're just full of articles, yeah. full of it. And um, uh, I remember the game, the first game, man. Just like singing the anthem, you know, that was probably the most special part. You know, being being out there finally um, and being given that opportunity and. Just looking at my family and yeah, you get a bit emotional at the time. Yeah. And uh, man, it was we just lost that game. I think it was six four, uh, but yeah, it was probably one of the, the best experiences ever. Yeah. Just being able to play in front of I think it was what eighty thousand at ANZ. What was the training like? You know, because it's uh, going to another level of intensity. Like playing for Australia again, huge honour. But I'm assuming the training, although intense, it's more kind of professional. Whereas like New South Wales training, I assume. It's professional and also there's like this edge of like fuck the rivalry there's yeah. the rivalry there yeah. like, and you feel like the hatred and yeah. you know like you know, queensland had that one of the best teams in ever in history and yeah. um coming across like coming up against those kind of guys like i think it made you even hungry even more yeah. to kind of get on top of them and um yeah just to, just the whole week it's and you know what like the week itself just goes like that just yeah. goes so quick man yeah. and trying to like gel with the like a pretty much virtually strangers yep. trying to get a team together and get, build that chemistry is probably like the hardest thing as a co- uh, New South Wales or state of origin coach yep. um, to get the boys on the field and you know kind of you know that's what everyone loves origin about it's like about like the, the, the hits like the, the camaraderie um, that brotherhood everyone yep. likes to talk about absolutely uh, but you, you have to think about that's a, that's a week prep to kind yeah. of really get that it's crazy like football teams take how, how long to get that Mate, absolutely so I think that's what makes origin so special absolutely absolutely um, do you remember anything from the game at all uh yeah just uh just like, like the, the it's full of emotion and i think that's the hardest thing as well as a football player you've got to separate that emotion and, yeah. and focus on your job your yeah. role um about that's the probably the, 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 the most difficult part um i remember taking taking a run off uh, i think it was one of the kick returns i just back fenced it just ran it straight yeah um i think i i, I got i got uh, Jazzy o'neill in a, in a bad spot I kind of dazed him a bit yeah, but yeah um yeah just moments in the game man it was just uh it was huge like it was just it, like in origin like the smallest thing that will happen is it's, it's a big moment it could yeah. be the biggest moment in the game yeah, like totally. it just, yeah it was uh oh you know what as well like to, to share that game um to share the footy field with michael jennings like he's one of my best mates and yeah that was probably even more special as well to be mm. to, to play alongside him um yeah ever since that penrith I remember when we first met me and jenko like i was a bit starstruck by him mm. you know he was playing playing NRL since I was 18, yeah. playing Origin at such a young age. It was, I don't know how many years he was playing already. Yeah. And um, yeah, like, yeah, me, me and Jekko probably yeah, still did his day, but we like, were best mates. And well, you know, speaking of him, how's he going with everything? You know, mm. the, the, with the failing the, yeah. the, the drug test and such a, it's such it's a weird sad. topic. Like yeah. I can't for the life of me see it. Like he, a, a guy like that, I can't, for the life of me, see him intentionally ingesting ah, it. Yeah. He doesn't need to. Likewise. Like, likewise. what, he went his whole career. We get drug tested our whole careers. careers I know. Like, people, like, a lot of fans think that, that footy players, we're all just on it and it's this dirty little secret. Mm, yeah. No one talks about it. No. Like, there's no. nothing, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know when. I don't think there's, there's, a, there's no room for error. In to, like, it, you, 
I don't, I can't see the window of opportunity to kind of take a uh, banned substance and try and getting away with it. I just yep. can't, I can't see maybe, it. Maybe some clubs have done it, but when I was at the Broncos, there was never a discussion about any yeah. PEDs same. or I'm anything. The, like, I couldn't even tell you what, it just wasn't. Like yeah. you walked in, you had your Musashi stuff. They gave you the tablets that were like, you know, um, beta alanine, um, fish, oil. fish oil. And that was it. And then you pre-workout. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. So like, yeah. I think a lot of fans have this misconception that there's this dark underworld of like... I've got heaps of mates that told me like, oh, surely he's on the gear. Surely he's on the gear. I'm like, mate, I go, he's not. I've, I've been accused of being on yeah. the gear. I'm like, mate, I go... It's just not a thing. Uh, oh. they, they just train their dicks off. That's <laughs> what it is, honestly. It's fucked. Um, it's fucked. What's it been like? You know, I just think it's so sad because like whether he in, did intentionally or didn't intentionally, the only thing I can think of, let's let's say the worst case scenario and he did intentionally take it. The only thing I can think of is at the end of his career and he's trying to recover as quickly as he can. Mm, mm, mm. But I, I still I still just, I find it hard to believe that he intentionally did it. What's it been like? Have you spoken to him since? Oh, 100%. Like? He's, yeah. he's one of my best mates, you know what yeah. I mean? So I always keep in touch with him. Um, caught up last week or the week before. Um, I'm actually glad that it's all kind of resolved for him and, you know, he's kind of like, Thinking moving about forward. yeah, moving forward. Uh, he's focusing on his business at the moment. Uh, he's What's got his a, business? Uh, he's got like a still fixing. Um, he's a still fixing supplier. Yep. So you know he supplies um, if so steel rods, mesh, um, L bars, all that kind of stuff yeah, for him okay. and his brother. What's it called? Oh Jesus, Re Recon. 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 Yeah, right, Recon. We'll go check it out if you want to support. Recon Genko. supplies. Recon supplies. And um, yeah, uh, he, he's pretty good, man. Like I, for me, I don't like. I don't even bring it up. I yeah. don't want. I don't I, like. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, it's hap what's happened's happened. Uh, for me personally, I've got so many, so many good memories and um, good times with him that, like, I don't want to think about yeah. think of what what's hap what just happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's like, he's actually really good. He's he's actually really a re really resilient person. Like he's yeah. always someone that's always sees the positive out of things. He's always smiling. Always like making a joke out of things. And um, man, I, I don't think I've ever seen. I've hardly seen Jenko ever ever sad to be honest. Oh really? He's a yeah. positive kind of pretty, guy. Pretty positive and yeah, like yeah, no, he's uh, you know what he's he's doing really well. He's yeah, doing really well. That's good. That's yeah. good to hear that it hasn't rattled. like obviously he'd be upset. Oh absolutely. mate, hundred yeah. percent. But but it's good that it hasn't defeated him. Mate, he's if you th look at look back on his career, he's one of the best centers ever to to, to play the game yeah. like ever. And uh, I can't. Uh, you just look at his highlights, the stuff that he's done. Like it still blows me away. And he's yep. he's my best mate. Like I just yeah. can't believe like. The stuff that I've seen him do. Absolutely. Um, not that I tell him to his face. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, man, he's, uh, he's, he's a freak. He's, um, I love you, Jenko. And um, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's doing well. That's good to hear. Very good to hear. Because uh, as I said, like, I, I can't see him intentionally. But it, look, even if he did, then he did. I, I don't know. But there's no way he did it for his whole career. He would have been pinged. Mm. He would have been easily, easily pinged ages ago. We get drug tested all the time. Easily. Easily. Um, okay. So yeah, 2016. You play that first game. So did you play all, the whole series? Yeah, you played yep. in all three. Yep. Um, so did you? You lost the first game, but you won the second game, or you won the third game? We won the third game. Okay, so it was a two nil defeat. Yep. And then the third game you win. What was? Do you remember? What do you remember mo mostly from that series? <sighs> oh, I remember the second game playing up in Suncorp. Um, mate, we were just. Queensland were just out of the blocks, man. Like yeah. about, uh, everyone talked about, like what it's like playing in Suncorp, um, the atmosphere, the hatred that Queenslanders have for bl the Blues boys, and uh, you definitely feel that. Yeah. You definitely felt that, and um, yeah, they just they just grow a leg Queenslanders when they play there, yeah. Um, and yeah, we just couldn't keep up with them. We mm. just they just absolutely trounced us. Uh, I remember the third game, well, you know, it was toe to toe, toe to toe, um, and then. I think it was like 30 seconds to go. Jenko gets the ball. I'm, I, was, I remember screaming for it, screaming for it. Yeah. Um, decides to show a go, left foot step, beats a couple of defenders. I think he went the hard way by doing that, but yeah. um, bumped off, I can't remember who else. And then, um, yeah, scores, scores a try. And I remember uh, we all just run in and yeah. uh, everyone sees the footage. Like he's, he's walking off, celebrating by himself, doing these <laughs> ones. And uh, me, yeah. Freeze, and I think Woodsy, like, we're just all hugging and just jumping yeah. up and down. Woodsy, buddy, jumps over me, falls flat on his ass. And, <laughs> uh, but yeah, winning that game was so cool. Yeah, it was yeah. so special. The way, the way we won it as well. Um, uh, I think I think it kind of takes the, it took the gloss about uh, a bit out of um, Queensland winning the whole series, but yeah. Uh, yeah, for me that was probably the highlight. Yeah, that, that's hilarious. There's so many things went wrong in that <laughs> try celebration. Oh, Worst so try many. celebration ever. Oh, by far, <laughs> by far. Um, also, you win the Dally M Winger of the Year that year again. You know what's what's the feeling like when you when that happens? 
Oh, yeah, pretty, pretty cool, man. I remember I was so nervous going to the Daily M's, man, yeah. like rubbing shoulders with like the best in the game and, um, you know, having to get my suit organised, my wife having her to go, go through the stress of getting her dress sorted yeah, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It's such a, it's such a great week just to, to, um, to be acknowledged um, and to be present with all the uh, best players and coaches in the game, yeah. mate. It's, uh, it's such a cool night. And uh, I remember when my, <laughs> when my name got – I, I was – I didn't think I was going to win. Like yeah. I just, um, there were so many good players that year. And uh, yeah, when my name got called up, I was just in so much shock and I just <laughs> wanted to get up there as fast as I could. Yeah. I didn't even kiss my wife up, like, thank you. Like, you know, support. <laughs> I, didn't, I just brushed down and just, like, just pinned my ears back for the stage. Just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you, mate. I just stood there like a little boy. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was such a great night and um, to, <clears throat> the, the bloody award is so bloody heavy, but um, yeah, to have that, uh, to be recognised as one of the best wingers that year was um, yeah, yeah. pretty special and cool. And Mate. I've got that in my, in, you know, in my study, and um, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's cool, man. Mate, it's so uh, good. What a yeah, what an honour, what an absolute honour. Okay, so um, you're the highest try scorer as well that year, uh, and you get named in the Four Nations. Uh, you mm. played a match in the tournament against as against Scotland. Yeah, uh, you scored two tries. Um, but you suffer a freak mishap oh, at training due to uh, yeah. touch footy when he collided with Dugan. Oh, mate. What happened there? Mate, absolute just just freaky, man. Like, oh. I remember yeah, we were playing, I think it was like a five-side kind of touch kind of game. Uh, it was a bit of a con, a con drill, conditioning drill. And, mm. uh, mate, it was the the last play of the drill. Oh, my uh, God. Like, it had just, yeah, it just – talk about worst timing. Um, and uh, I think – Smithy put in a grubber and like you get like points if you get like repeat sets and stuff like that and I was uh, sh shepherding the board to go dead um dude tried like like tap it tap back, it back right? in yeah. and our legs got caught up or something happened I happened that that fast and I just felt like um massive sharp pain in my knee and um I, I had a me I had my I've done my medial before yeah and I'm like I go it has to be worse than this and yeah, I, yeah. I, I, my, my gut feeling knew it was worse. Yeah. And um, the physios come out right now and, mate, there was so, that day as well, it was full of media. Mm. Um, and the physios had uh, done the ACL tests and, like, could tell the, the – I'll never forget the look on their face. Really? And to tell me the news and I'm like, like – I was, I was still in shock. I couldn't yeah, believe it. Yeah, yeah, Because it was like the way it happened would have happened. Mate, it just happened so fast. Like, yeah. I just couldn't believe it. And then I got in the, you know, the the cart. They took me to my room and – taken me to my room and um, – so I'm still I'm I'm still alone at this point, trying to digest what just happened, mm. and uh, all the boys after training they, they started coming in, and seeing, checking up on them, checking up on me. Um, Coops was probably um, and Greggy as well, um, mm. always checking up on me. And um, so Cooper Cronk, was Cooper Cronk was yeah, like, yeah. It was awesome. Um, and obviously Dukes, like he was absolutely shattered, like he yeah, couldn't believe, like, we, we just couldn't believe it. it. Was just a freak accident, man. Like, yep. I, like I didn't have any animosity or any like anger towards him. Yeah. You know, just I had to keep reminding myself it was an accident. The, the probably the hardest point was just being in that room alone, like staring at the ceiling, throbbing pain in my knee, and just trying to work out, digest what happened. Yeah, absolutely. And like, ask, just, I just had so many questions, like why did it have to happen? Why now? Yeah. Um, not only, not only that, like prior to going over to playing the Four Nations, I got married. Um, there was a test on the same day as my wedding day, and I had to tell Mal, I go, I'm getting married, I can't play in Perth. Yep. And um, um, yeah, so that happened, and we had to like delay our honeymoon. Oh, yeah. And so my wife was still in Australia at the time, and the next day she was actually meant to fly out oh. when it happened. And she um, so excited. Yeah, though. oh yeah, she was stoked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, she would have been so excited. Yo, to, to come home, over. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, I know. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I have to break the news to her. It's like she was absolutely distraught, and yep. um, you know, there were so many things I had to kind of like get sorted in such a short amount of time. Surgery. How I was going to fly back. Um, Cancelling all my honeymoon trip, calling up all the hotels oh, and whatnot. Oh, what a up. headache! Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, and I did. We didn't. We did. We didn't take up travel insurance, like so. We oh. lost. We lost all our money on the honeymoon. Like, oh lost. my god! And everyone knows. Everyone knows how much bloody honeymoons yeah, are. Close. Especially. I would have just done it, man. Fuck I it. I should have. <laughs> yeah. I know I should have. But saying that, I want to. Again, I knew I, if I didn't, like that was going to put a couple more months on my rehab, yeah, and, my, yeah. and I was going to miss a couple more months yeah. in the next season. I yeah, didn't totally. want to do that to Penrith. Yeah, totally. totally. And um, so I thought I did the right thing. I, I think it was like a week later. Oh no, sorry, I stayed there for a week to get all the swelling out of my knee, and I did as much physio as I could. And then once it was um, once I was able to kind of walk and mm. you know do my own things, so I had to carry around two luggage bags. Oh. I was getting on the flight by myself. Yeah. Um, 
I flew back to um to to Sydney and um yeah I think it was like a few days later I had my op. Uh, do they fly back first class so you could sleep? <laughs> I wish. It was, oh. biz- it was business. Biz- it was business. Business. Okay. business is still good. First yeah. class, mate. You're talking about first class, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> no. hey, you're a star, bro. You're one of the big dogs. You're one of the fucking big dogs. Money bags. But uh, I say that business class is pretty cool, man. Yeah. It's like yeah. you got yeah. you got there's a bar at the back of the plane, and I remember <laughs> us flying there. We pretty much hung around at the bar the whole time, and mm. oh man, it was, oh, it, was <laughs> it was carnage. It was um, absolute carnage on that flight. Okay, so you do. This is your first kind of long term injury. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was that process like for you? Because it's 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 something that most footy players have to face. Yeah. But you can try and tell someone how it's going to be, mm. but you'll never be prepared mentally until you go through. Yeah. Going, you know, because it's you got confidence and mm. and am I ever going to be out of? Because like people think, oh yeah, they'll just do the rehab, they'll be sweet. But you get thoughts in your head of like, will I ever be oh. able to run the same again? Hundred. Like, will I ever be able to? Because it's such a dramatic um, injury. Like yeah. when I, I broke a lot of my ribs and my lung collapsed. Like there was a long period where yeah. it was like, could I, will I ever be able to take contact properly yeah. again without hurting? Yeah. What was it like for you that first period? Yeah, probably the mental battle was probably the, the biggest challenge, yeah. like going through that rehab um, process. But uh, I remember I sat down with the physios. Okay, I want to know what I'm doing. I, I yep. laid out my whole, my whole plan, my whole rehab plan. Um, when I'm going to start running, what, when I'm going to start swerve running, straight running, whatever, stepping. I had, I had my whole timetable laid out on me, uh, for me. Um, and I remember I had to be extra diligent because I wanted to get back as early as possible. So um, I think that was half the battle. And then once I knew, had it on paper, I, I had my plan. That was my main focus. And that, didn't, that took away my focus on, okay, what if I do it again? What if this happens? Like, mm. I didn't really want to think about that too much. Um, I just wanted to do everything as, pos- as right um, as possibly I could, um, as dilig- diligently I could. And um, I remember the first game when I um, was, I think it was the Bulldogs I was coming back to play for. Um, and um, I remember that week was so bloody hard. Like I was yeah. thinking about, like you said, like, oh, am I going to do, do it again? What's it going to be like to run out there again? I've got like catching up on my match fitness. Mm. Like I haven't, I've got none of that. Mm. Um, I'm going in, you know, throwing myself in the deep end really. Yeah. And um, I think, I wanted to get my hands on the ball as fast as I could. Yeah. Uh, and as soon as I took that first run, it felt like it was just a normal game. Besides yeah, okay. like the blowing out the cobwebs, that I'm, you know, trying to get that fitness. Yep. Um, and yeah, we ended up having a, uh, I played a pretty decent game and I remember scoring the last try of that game and all the boys got around me. I remember Wanga Blake was the first one to get around me and gave me a big hug. And yep. um, you can see there's a, there's a photo of me hugging him and like I just, I look at that and like it's, it just it reminds me of just the relief yeah. of relief of just lacing up my boots again after a long-term injury and um, yep. saying to myself like you know what I did it 100%. Like I, I got back it was it was a you know it was a bit of a struggle but it was a bit of a challenge that I, 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 I had to face and there was no ways about it um, it was either I was going to let it beat me or I was going to get back on that footy field and do, continue doing what I love and yep. um, you know I was fortunate enough to get back on that field and yeah we well, got back on the field you also got back into the Australians <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, you, you play in uh, a match against France, and then you play against Lebanon, uh, yeah. where you marked up against Abbas Miski. <laughs> my my twin, about your my, twin. My twin. What was it? That would have been a lot of G ups before the game. What was that like, <sighs> mate? Was a lot of G ups. The memes did not stop. Um, <laughs> I had to get a photo topless with after the game. <laughs> who's got? A, who, who's got a better. less less body fat? Oh, him by far, <laughs> <laughs> by far. Uh, yeah, he uh, that week. I'll never forget. Um, you know what, not even that week, before that, let's, let's rewind it back a bit. Um, I pledged my allegiance to, to play for Australia just because um, I felt like I had unfinished business. Yeah. You know, I my, my tour in 2016 got cut short. Um, I knew all the boys, you know, they're one of my good mates and um, to have the opportunity to play again, mm. um, mate, I had to take that opportunity. Yeah. Like, yeah, my culture, my, my, my family um, were Lebanese and mm. um, mate, I'm extremely lucky to, to have my Lebanese descent, but I, at the same time, I'm, I'm really grateful to live in a, in a country that we do live in, in, mm. in Australia, and to play at that high level and to, to, be, to have the opportunity to play in the World Cup for the green and gold was something I just couldn't pass on. And, mm. um, mate, uh, uh, I'll tell you, mate, <laughs> oh, I was getting death threats. I was getting abused oh, online. Oh, really? Oh, I was copping From it, From the Lebanese community yeah, upset yeah. that you didn't yeah, choose yeah, Lebanon. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they're very pa- – like, Lebanese people are very passionate, yeah. very emotional. And, yeah. um, mate, one, once I said that I wasn't going to play for Lebanon um, – yeah, they took it personally. And really? Wow. I don't think I've ever been booed. I don't think I've ever been hated that much in my whole career. Wow. Like, leading up to playing Lebanon. Like, I was the biggest, one of the, yeah, I just, and I, it kind of annoyed me in a way because, like, I, go, I didn't do anything personally against you. Like, I, yeah. like, like, I'm like, surely they understand. Like, surely, but they, nah, just. 
Well, yeah, like, it kind of really, it really made me angry to be honest. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. lie to you. It really made me angry. Like seeing all the messages, and I'm like, I'm like, what have I done? Like, yeah. I, I, man, and I'm playing the game. I feel like I was gonna get shot. I, honestly, <laughs> I was getting absolutely booed, like yeah. sledged. I've never thought I would ever get sledged in my yeah, career. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and it's by your people too, which oh. is, it hurts the most. You know, like you, we're brothers. Yeah, <laughs> mate. I remember after the game, like I still wanted to do the right thing, mm. and um, uh, I still like done. You know, Clapped everyone and thank yeah. you, blah blah blah. And but still, I remember walking in the sheds. Like I, I wasn't even like thinking about playing the green and gold. Like how good it was. Like I was so angry and mad. Like mm. how like they I could cop that kind of abuse. Like yeah. it just it just really pissed me off. Mm. But um, well, yeah, it, was, it happened. And as an Australian, it's like as an Aussie, it's surprising to me because like don't get me wrong, I can't speak to having a heritage like your own. But like you're an Aussie too. Yeah, <laughs> you're born here. I know. Um, I know. So surely they can understand that, you know, you can be proud to be Lebanon, le- of that Lebanese was, descent. That was my mindset, right? <laughs> but you're also, but you're Australian as yeah, well. Yeah, so. Um, I mean, I, I understand their passion too, because as a country that is going through so much, obviously yeah, you need yeah. every person you can to, yeah. to but yeah, that's tough. That That's upsetting. Like but I, I did play for Lebanon first in terms of like, uh, represent, like, international career mm. um i played with him in 2009 and oh okay so yeah. 2009 i was gonna i was gonna get to that but i i, th- I thought because i thought you got named in the squad and then you didn't end up playing for him but 2009 you actually played for him played for him did yeah. you go is that when you went away and everything yep, like that yep, yep so walk us through that experience going away to so yeah playing for australia and playing for lebanon two total different experiences yep. um i felt like um playing for lebanon I, I really got a much more bigger experience in terms of culturally obviously yeah. um being my fam, uh, meeting my family that I've never met before in my, my life, um, going over to Lebanon and um, learning how my father grew up, mm. um, going to meet my uncles and aunties that I've never met before. I'm, I'm 19 years old and I've never met my uncles and my brothers, you know, my dad's brothers and sisters. Yep. Um, and that was so cool, man. Like, I felt like I'd known them for my whole life. Like, oh, really? Yeah, it was, it's such, wild, a, it was eh? such a weird... There's something about that blood connection. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either. Um, but, like but you're growing up in two different cultures, yeah. countries, yeah. and yet there's just this connection. But even like even going there and learning about the, the, the history of the country and like the, the people there, and like everyone's so hospitable, generous. Mm. Um, everyone says hello to like complete strangers. Hello, to, hello, how are you? Like, yeah. that threw me off. Yeah, like, you okay. know what I mean? Like, here you just walk past people, you know, you yeah. go about your business, but everyone's like, hey, how are you? Like, what do you, do you know? Like, they, yeah. they want to get to know you. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, that was such a humbling experience um and then yeah we were we versed italy um in tripoli mm. in lebanon i think we won like 86 nil something <laughs> something ridiculous Holy shit. something ridiculous Fucking um, hell. surely you scored a few meters uh i scored yeah i scored that game i scored <laughs> a couple of tries that yeah, game how did you score i can't remember i think i think i scored one or two i don't know i think i think i went off i didn't play the full game that game yeah i can't remember anyway and um then we went to scotland so um we played scotland in i think edinburgh I think it was and mate that was the probably the the worst conditions i've ever played a footy oh, game really Cold I'm, on, as I'm on the sting and it was gale force winds it was oh torrential God. rain it was minus god knows what yeah, yeah and um you couldn't even see the linings on the field that's how flooded the field is wow. i barely got the touch of the footy so i'm like out there just bloody <laughs> catching a cold yeah, yeah. um i remember um uh, i think it was liam Ayub that put in a grubber or george nadira yeah and i just pinned the ears and i, I was able to Score the try and I slid that far. I full collided with the cameraman, <laughs> almost killed myself. Yeah. Um, but after the game, mate, I'll never forget how cold it was. <laughs> but I rewind a bit. Um, John Elias, he was our coach. Uh, he uh, awesome character. One of the one of the greatest guys I know. Um, he he decides to get us in the huddle in the sheds and. Uh, Again, let me remind you, like it was the worst conditions, it's freezing cold. <laughs> and like the, the um, it's not like- No one wanted to play, put it yeah, that way. It, no one wanted to play a game of footy. It's footy, park that. footy pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. And um, he gets us in the circle and he goes, boys, I want you to close your eyes. I'm like, <laughs> uh, I'm like oh, okay, oh. all right. I'm 980, right? I'm yeah. not, and um, he's like, get your arms around each other, <laughs> close your eyes. And just, I want you just, just to focus and relax. <laughs> Freeze. He puts on Andre Bocelli, um, Time to Say Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all songs to hype, to hype us up over, it's like, time to 
so <laughs> please play it if you get the chance. And um, oh, mate, fuck. I'm just really, really trying to amp myself up, but it's not working. I'm like, got my head down. I'm looking around. I got my one of my mates, Stephen AU. He's absolutely losing it. Yeah, yeah. And um, I run out on the footy field. I'm not going to war here. And I'm like, I, I, what's, what's, I was just in a very, it was, just a, mate, it it was a very, very weird, um, weird feeling to run out to. But anyway. <laughs> We ended up losing that game. I think it was 22-10. Yeah. Um, and then we ended up playing Ireland in uh, Wales and mm. we, we, we smacked them 40 to something. And yep. that was actually, that was the um, Four Nation qualifier. So whoever yeah. won three of those games was the next um, team mm. to qualify. Uh, to be, it was like, the, there, was four, uh, there was four teams. So you got um, England, obviously, New Zealand, Australia, and the fourth team was to be made up whoever yeah, yeah. Yeah, won those three Man, games. Man, I didn't know like, I was playing NRL. I didn't even know that you could go travel the world and play like for- Oh, it was mad. It That's was bad. hectic. Yeah, it was like, so good. And also like the standard isn't that good. So yeah. you just fucking phone it in. Yeah. Because yeah. you would be fit as anything compared to the, a lot of those boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cause I can, I'm actually, this is, a, uh, this is a, I'm running joke, but it's a true story. <laughs> I, I'm actually eligible to play for China. What? Yeah, yeah. My, well, I know you got Italian in you or something. Nah, nah. My granddad's Chinese. Oh, really? Yeah, yep, oh, yep. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yep. It's um, try to go to team. I don't know, but it'd be funny if I ran out in a fucking Chinese. <laughs> dude. That best. was the best ever. Oh, but I checked this like birth certificate. Uh, surely, <laughs> could you imagine? I'd do it just for shits and giggles. <laughs> I mean, all time. Mate, if they bring out a Chinese side, I might get fit and bloody play. <laughs> could you imagine? Where would you play? Front row. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you like if the, the Chinese guys, they're not big. No, I'd be massive compared to that. You'd probably fucking... be the biggest bloke. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that trip away, um, did that because like a lot. Some people grow up and they're not. They may not be connected to their culture, or they may be connected to their culture. Mm. Did that really open your eyes mm. to wow? Look at their the heritage I have to call back on yeah. that. Like Australians is very different because our history is so short. Not indigenous people, obviously. Indigenous have a ve- the longest history oh, in, the con- in the history of the world. Um, but Aussies, we, we don't really have a history. You know, it's 250 years. So we don't, we don't get to experience that feeling of connection mm. to something that can go back 2000 years. Yep. Um, was that a good, ex- like what, what did you learn from that experience? Oh my, like you'd, my dad could tell me so many stories of him growing up, but it still won't, yeah, like I have to still go over there and experience that for myself. If that makes yeah. sense. Like I can, I can, he paints a bit of a picture, but um, once I went over there and experienced it, like the food's like unbelievable. Um, Beirut itself, like it's like the Paris of the Middle East. It's mm. just such a beautiful country. Like um, the country itself, like you can go from the beach in the morning and an hour and a half drive, you're in the snow. Wow. Like it's just, it's just, it's just crazy. And then, and then you drive back and you party all night. Like that's mm. just like, it's wow. just an awesome place to be. Yep. And um, yeah, just to be, just to reunite with family, meet them, learn about their upbringings, um, go to the village just itself. And like, mm. just to see how my dad grew up. Like that yep. was, that was so special. So the, the place that your dad grew up in, was it mm. like, you know, did it have electricity connected? Nah. Or, so nah. what was it like? Nah, like it was hardly, so his village right, like currently, like, doesn't really have running water or like, like electricity. It's pretty like a lot of people from the village have moved to a bigger village called Zartes. Yeah. It's near, not too far from where my dad's from. Um, so that's got more yeah, access to like so food, yep. like electricity, uh, yeah. water. Um, I'm not sure how, how it's all, what's, what's, what's happening over there at the moment, but I'm sure everyone knows like it's, Lebanon's doing, yeah, it's going tough. for a very, very tough time. Absolutely. Um, so my thoughts and prayers to everyone over there, but um, yeah, I know one thing about Lebanese people, they're, they're extremely resilient yep. and um, this is not the first hurdle they've had to, to yeah. overcome. So um, like everything, I'm sure they're going to over, overcome yep. it. And um, I think the best thing as well, like everyone just reunites being Lebanese, like mm. especially people from here in Australia, like everyone's really reunited and, and everyone's doing as much as they can. If it's like sending over supplies, food, water, yep. um, sanitation supplies even, yeah. um, trying to rebuild and help the country get to where, where, everyone, where it should be. Absolutely and and, and it's one be. of the most beautiful countries in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So seeing your father like grow up in a place that, you know, didn't have electricity and, you know, running water kind oh, of. Just makes you, makes you feel how lucky I am yeah, and grateful yeah. I am. Like, Sometimes as a kid growing up, you kind of take things for granted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, especially the beautiful country that we live in today. Like, we've got everything given to us. You know, we've got a great healthcare system. You know, we can go down the shops and I can pick up whatever I want. You know yep. what I mean? And, um, you know, this country, you work hard, you can give, you've been given a, a very good life. Yeah. Um, it's not that, not that much like that in Lebanon. You know, there's yeah. like a big, dip, big gap in classes. Like, you're either very, very rich or you're very, yeah. very poor. And, mm. um, yeah, like, just to know, like, how lucky I am to live in a country we, where yep. I, we are in today. And, 
uh, yeah, it definitely opened my eyes. Think about how brave you've got to be, your father, oh. um, before the internet to go, you know what, I'm going to give myself a better life. I'm going to go to Australia. Don't Probably didn't speak the language or nah. a little bit of yeah, it. No, nah. And no. just start a new life. Like that is like brave as because you wouldn't even you wouldn't know anything he's told just, yeah nothing at all like he's the same with my mother yeah. like she's had to come to a country for a better living and um didn't know any any english yeah. um just again throwing themselves in the deep end but um yeah so my mother's side my dad sorry i got a touch on that he had to take a boat to cyprus get on a plane from there. Like, this boat let me tell you it's just like a little dinghy or something <laughs> yeah. and my dad's telling me like there was waves the size of mountains <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a miracle that like they didn't it. flip yeah. um or capsize but um yeah so like it was a big commute to kind of get to australia yeah and the same with my mum. um so she lived uh, in madeira a little tiny tiny, tiny island off portugal and um that the flyer plane from madeira to portugal and to get from to portugal to to australia it's like a almost 24 hours of flying yeah, it's yeah, huge yeah. um what made them what, what, why Australia? What made them come to Australia, you know, instead of America or, you know, London or... Never asked that question, yeah. but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not quite too sure on that, mm. but um, I f- definitely I felt like it was a country where they thought they can raise a family get a and um, to, get a chance to kind of, yeah, yeah give, my, you know, give the kids and my, my, my brothers, my uncles and aunties a better living, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, it's been really good for them. Um, okay, so... Fast forward back to uh, 2018. Uh, you you suffer that facial injury, round six, Titans. Oh, yeah. Far out, bro. Walk through that. Hectic. Oh, yeah. That's one of the most traumatic experiences ever. Um, again, freak of nature. Just a collision. Knee, not, not that it normally happens, but a knee to the face. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I just I remember once... It felt like it was one of the biggest hits I've ever copped to the head. And uh, when, once I was on the ground, um, I didn't want to look... Like, get my, like to flip over and turn up because as I was like clutching at my face um, it just felt like it was all sunk it was, oh. it was nothing there it was nothing there. it just felt like just a cheek like a, oh. my whole cheek was like that it was just all just flubber and um, uh, the fish just come over he's like turn around turn around and I, I, I didn't want to turn around because I was yeah. so scared what he was going to say yeah. and once I've turned around he's just seen my whole face sunken oh. and he's like come on we've got to get you off we've got to get you off get you off yeah. so he's giving me a towel and he's helped me cover my face I've walked off the doctor seen me straight away he's like we got yeah. to get you to the hospital oh, right now. Here's all you, but what you do, do not blow your nose. Yeah. Whatever you do. In your eyes. Will f- yeah. yeah. My whole nose was clogged up with blood. Yeah. I could barely breathe. Yeah. I'm in the shower and oh. I just went boost. And my whole, the air just went through my orbital and, and into my eyes. Went, and I was just like, yeah, I just didn't look right. Anyway, oh. so they, they freaked out even more. Everyone's freaking. So I've got to get you to the hospital now. You might lose an eye. They've, um, we've scanned it. Um, the surgeon come over and um, I booked in for. I was booked in for surgery, um, but they couldn't operate because there was so much air and swelling. So oh. we had to like wait two weeks for everything to subside and no go way. down. And um, so two weeks you had to just like kick back, do nothing, no, do nothing. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go out in public. Nothing, yeah. man. I was just so. Um, Did you? And it was just. Slava. Killed me. I was. I was in so much pain every day. I was given obviously medication for, it, but yeah. I didn't really do much and. Um, yeah, just the biggest thing was not, I didn't want to see anyone. I didn't want to see my yeah. family. I, didn't, I just didn't want anyone to see me like absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then I was booked in for surgery and I went from, I checked in at seven. Mm. I wake up and it was like seven at night. Se- seven or eight, oh, or eight, eight at night. And um, uh, yeah, it was like, like I don't know how many hours surgery that is. I think I went in for operation at nine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I went from nine to six. And once I come out of it, it was like seven o'clock at night. Oh, yeah. And um, the first time when I opened my eye, um, this was fully shut and um, my right eye opened and the first person I looked at was my wife and my oh, daughter and um, she started crying I, 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 I cried a bit as well and I remember the first thing I did um, they said that I might, they might have to like graft take a graft out yeah, yeah. so I was, cl- I was clutching at my hip to see <laughs> if <laughs> I had any yeah, yeah if I take anything out of that yeah. not, no um, and because there was two ways of the, of the operation. Either they cut me from one ear across and they pull my face forward. Oh my God. Um, or they make a couple of incisions, one here, um, one in my eyelid like that, and one through my mouth. Yeah. Because there was a piece of bone um, behind my eye socket and there was, it was the same as my eyeball. The bone was like sticking out like that. Oh my God. And um, if that protruded my eyeball, no. I was I lose my eye. Yeah. Um, so that was gonna be the trickiest part for me having to go back behind my eye and yeah. try and remove that oh fragment. Oh my God, bro. And um, me dead. yeah, That's so wild. like my whole face was just like 
it was a jigsaw puzzle, just all sh- piece of bone just oh, shattered. That's wild. So he had to kind of like, kind of like, yeah, just yeah, put everything back together, and um, uh, thankfully it all worked out. And I remember I had to like try and open my eyes to see if I still had my vision. And I, I, when I when I saw my wife, like I was, yeah. I just started crying, man. Yeah, it was absolutely. Like, it was um, yeah, a weight off my shoulders, and uh, I was in like the next 24 hours probably I was sleep deprived because yeah. like they wanted to see if I was going to lose my eye or not. Yeah. So every hour they were doing one hour observations or coming in the room, they'll like the lift open. They'll look and like, they'll just swipe yeah. the light in my eyes. So I couldn't sleep for 24 hours, a bit more and far out, but I got through it, man. Yeah. And then, um, went home and, um, my, yeah, my recovery went from there. I think it was 12 weeks and I was back on the footy field. Oh, <laughs> right. 12 oh, weeks. That, that was probably the hardest, kind of to get back and get my head right and yeah. uh, tell myself like it's not gonna like, I'm gonna be all right it's not gonna yeah. happen again it's not gonna happen again it was just a freak accident it's not gonna happen again and yep um, and be able to take the contact you know the, the, yeah, yeah. the worried that you're gonna not far out um and so what that same year you sign a contract a three-year extension yeah that's pretty good from the Panthers like unreal they could have um fucking can do what they hundred percent. He's a one-year one deal. Hundred percent. And 100%. you would have taken it because you you got you've just gotten injured. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Okay, so yeah, you start um, 2019 as uh, first short swinger, but um, you eventually get demoted to reserve grade because mm. um, you started the, the whole team started poorly. But you only spent one week before you came back. Was that just a, a matter of just a little kick up the bum, or was it? Were you still trying to find confidence with your? Your face again. So that was that was another bizarre year. Like I remember that was Ivan on first year back. Yep. And oh, um, sorry, actually, yeah. Before we get get to that, walk us through the whole hook getting the getting the flick and that. What was that like at the club? That was bizarre uh, the way that happened. Yeah, I was as a player. Like you just yeah yeah you got to ask questions. But um you know at the end of the day, because it, it happened so quickly. Um, we still had to focus on footy games, and, yeah, so yeah. And, and we were still in, in a position. Fourth. Yeah, I know. Like, we were still in a position where we could like do something special that year. So yeah. um, we didn't want to let that overshadow um, our season and um, put a damper on, on it. But we all like felt for Hook. We all loved Hook as a person and a, as a coach. And um, you know, mate, I, he, he's coached me in one of my best years of my career. So I'm, I'm very lucky to have him in, yeah. in my life and um, and be part of my career. So um, Cam, I actually. Cameron Serrato who ended up taking taking the head coach role. I'm very very close with him, and I actually played footy with him. Oh, so really? like I my first couple of years at Penrith, um, I played with Cam, and um, he's he's always helped me and tried mm. to keep me on the straight and narrow. And yep. uh, I've 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 learned a lot of, a lot of him as well in terms of professionalism and um, to kind of always prepare the best you can. Yeah. Because um, footy doesn't last forever, and um, you want to you know be be grateful for the good times, I guess. Yep. Um, and he'd done an amazing job, and uh, and then. Yeah, back in the that year, um, Ivan's back, and mm. that was one of the hardest preseasons I, I had as well. Like, uh, it was one of the stick- hottest preseasons I've ever um, been involved in, especially out, out in Penrith. You can't you can barely yeah. breathe out there oh, in the summer summertime. But yep. um, I don't know. I had so much optimism going into that year because the way we went the year before, um, I felt like I just had a belief in the squad. I felt like we could do something special, and obviously, it wasn't meant to be. And yep. uh, me personally, I just um, it was a perfect example. Like, I was training hard i was doing i was trying to do everything right but it just wasn't working out for me and uh again like i yeah i ended up getting dropped that one that one week and i told myself i go you know what i'm 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 not gonna put my i'm gonna put my ego aside i'm not gonna you know i'm just gonna take it on the chin um obviously ivan thinks is what this is what's best for me and the team and um i respected that and i just went and i'm you know, I, I did my best for the boys. We ended up beating the Warriors that game, and um, the following week I was back in the team, and I think we went on a pretty good run actually. I, I think I think we were still a chance to make the finals the back end of the year. Mm. Um, I can't remember how many games we won. I think we won six games in a row after uh, after I come back. Yeah. And then um, yeah, and then I think we finished the year pretty strongly, pretty positive positively, uh, and that was kind of our stepping block for the next year. Yeah, and then say so 2020 rolls around and. Uh Wow, what a year from you guys. Where, where did that where where come from? Where did it come from? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I was saying. Like, I had the belief that we could do something special, right? Yeah. And um, I think when Ivan came, he, he impl- I think he needed a, a, maybe a year to kind of like everyone to get used to the mm. systems and yep. um, the culture he was trying to create. And everyone was on board with that. And, mm. and um, we all, like, I remember every, that year, I think oh, there was only like, was, we all say it, it was like probably only two sessions we were off, training really? sessions. So just on everyone. Well, on. on every single training session, it, it was yeah. it was crazy, man. It was like clockwork. Like yeah. if it was in a gym, if it was um in in video, like yep. if it was everything that we took part on that year, like we just 
we, everyone wanted to just do the best they could. Yeah. And um, man, that was just one of, one special year. Like I, I, I don't even know how, like that that pan, uh, the para game we played them at Bank West. I don't even know how we lost against them that game. We were in total control, but I think we coasted a bit too much in that game, and yep. Para just come kind of snuck up snuck up behind us, ended up winning and. I think that was our only regular season game we lost. Yep. Yeah, yeah, crazy. crazy. What was it like seeing a guy like Cleary? I'm like, I'm such a big fan of Cleary, but oh, people likewise. forget, like there were a couple of years where he struggled and he was getting smashed by the fans. And now all of a sudden he's turning into the player we all know he can be. What's it like playing with a guy like Cleary and seeing his development? Mate, he's just one of the most down to earth kind of guys. Yep. You know, he, he always puts the team first. Um, and he's a guy that leads by example. You know, you can go, you can have guys that just you know talk for the sake of it, but like he will talk and everyone listens. He's that, yeah. he's that kind of character and type type of player. Um, and I, I remember at a young age when I, when, when I was eighteen, I think actually yeah. <laughs> there was one time he was playing in the twenties still, and um, we we're playing in Bathurst against um, Canberra, and uh, he was rooming with me and Jeremy Lattimore. God knows why um, the coach decided <laughs> to put him with us, uh, but. He barely left that room. Let me tell you, he 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 I'll always tried. Come on, come hang out with us. But he was you know very shy and yeah. and whatnot. And um, he ended up playing twenties that um uh, the, the day before. Uh, sorry, the game before us. Yeah. Um, I think they smoked Canberra by seventy plus. Wow. Uh, and then not too long after that, he ended up debuting against Melbourne as well. Yeah. So um, and the rest is history, man. He just um he just kind of kept on developing, 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 and he always one of the last players to leave the field if it was him practicing his kicking um his passing game management whatever he's yep. just yeah like I, I always knew he was going to be special and i always believed in he was going to be special yeah he's uh he's incredible absolutely so grand final rolls around um and what do you reckon you just got ambushed like what happened what happened in that grand final you know um yeah ambush is a is one way to put it but i feel like we start the first five minute period. I think we started, yeah. we started unreal, crazy, unreal. Yeah. And then a few things went against us, and it's like we couldn't recover. It was so weird. Like I, I've never heard us that quiet in a huddle once. Like if we conceded or, yeah, yeah it was it was probably the quietest we've ever been. We've always tried to be like uh, uh, always communicate with each other. Um, if it was like a left edge with the left edge, right edge with the right edge, middle, you know, handling that. Um, I don't know. It was just just a bizarre like way. We you can see that penalty try. Which is like a try that we've never conceded. That kind of tr- it was weird. Yeah. Um, I think Smithy put in a grubber. He ricochets off three blokes. Yeah. He just dives on it and scores. Yeah. Um, um, the intercept. Nate thrown in, his first. I don't know. I've, ne- I've never thrown, seen him throw an intercept pass. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh man, it was like. But the blink of an eye, we're like eight nil down. Yeah. And like uh, we were the best defensive side in in the, uh, in the comp that year. Yeah. Um, I think there's a crazy. Oh, I read the crazy stat the <coughs> other day. Like. Um, one of the best defensive teams in yeah, history. Absolutely. And um, mate, it was like, what the hell is happening? I remember going in the sheds at half time, so quiet. Yeah. Like what? what the, like, we, we, it was like we couldn't make make up why, what was happening. Yeah, it was just confused. Yeah, it was shell shock. Yeah, and then um, I, I remember I blew up a bit, and um, a few guys like, I'm like, let's fucking let's go. Like we're in the grand final, mate. Like yeah. we, this has been one of the best years ever. We still got a chance to f- come back and get these blokes. Yeah. Um. I think they scored the first try in the second half, so that rocked us a bit. And then our comeback started coming. And but unfortunately it was just a bit too late and yeah. we didn't have enough time on the board and yep. um they beat us by a try in the end. Yeah. Like it was Far out. Yeah, it was the biggest kick in the guts, man, because we we so believed that we deserved to win that, that year. And yep. uh, me me as well, like I wanted to win a grand final not only for myself but for the club. I wanted to repay the club a premiership, man, because how much to, I just, I've just got such an emotional connection with the, with the club. I've been there for, yeah. I was there for nine seasons, and to find like I, every time I was there, I, every single year, I believe we can do it. I believe yeah. we can do it. I've always had that belief, yeah. and um, that was probably the closest I've uh, I've been to winning a premiership with the club. And um, that following year, they were able to go one better. Mm. And so you know, it it gets even worse for you. Four eight hours after the grand final, you get called in, and they say, yeah. So h- how did that all come about? With was it? Any inkling before that that they weren't they wanted you to move on early or like I hadn't because <coughs> you had one year left on your contract yeah right? yeah I don't I don't know if you want to call it an inkling but um, I don't know I didn't really get any signs of it to be honest with you yeah. um, so it was a it was a bit of a shock the only inkling I got was when when I got the message from Ive and um, that's when I'm like yeah, it's probably not a good good when he said, catch can up you, you want to come and catch, catch up catch up yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 
I don't know. I, I, it happened, and um, yeah, I, I wasn't. I, I guess I didn't really um, see myself leaving the club the way I did. Like I didn't yeah. like being having my time there. But again, like I, I, I don't know if it was foolish of me or naive. Like again, I, I get it. It's a business. End of the day, and I, I, underst I understood. I understood. Yeah. Um, and you know what? If if that's that's the case, if it was for the club, for the club's best interest, and um, for um, the, young, the younger players' best interest, mate, yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm, I'll, I'll, it's it's a no brainer that I should yeah. leave and go somewhere else. And um, I think if, if like if we both if both of us can um, take uh, have our time back, I reckon it could ha could have been handled a bit bit better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mate, I don't I don't hate Ivan at all. Like yeah. I, I you know like I really respect him. He's he'd been a massive influence on my career. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think once the dust settled and stuff like that, like was I angry? Of course I was angry at the time. Yeah. I was you know it cut me deep. I loved I loved that club. Yeah. Um, I loved the players. I loved the, like my almost like my brothers, man. Like yeah. the, especially coming the year that we had. Mm. Um, it was such a tight knit group that we had, man. And um, the last thing on my mind was wanting to leave, but yeah. um, I had to do what was best for the club and for myself. And um, and for the younger players, and uh, once I guess, I guess once the dust settled, and um, I kind of like, you know, I, I guess I understood. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, understood. It's kind of like you wish it didn't happen, but you understand like footy. This is just footy yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah, business. Yeah, and just one of those things. This is way the way it goes, man. Yeah, the way 100%, it goes, one hundred percent. But it does suck though because you stay. You know, you you think there's a, you know, you stay loyal for so long and you go through so much together, yeah. and then all of a sudden when it doesn't suit them. They're like, sorry, we need to move you on. And you're like, well, look, think, you think about what about all the times it didn't suit me to be loyal, but I did be loyal because I love the club. I think, yeah. Yeah, well, but that's just footy. That's footy, 100%. 100% footy, absolutely. Um, and I mean, you got the chance to be under Wayne Bennett, which is one of the greatest coaches of all time. 100%. What's it like being under Wayne? Oh, well, like, yeah, I, um, I remember, I didn't really have much to do with him. I didn't even have a discussion with him yeah. before I signed, funny oh, enough. Um, uh, I remember when I signed... Just to go there, I'm like, does he want to have a meeting with me? Doesn't want to sit, like, get to know me or anything. He's like, yeah. he, got, he he told my manager, he goes, oh no, I've heard enough about him. I've seen I've seen what he can do, and um, mate, I'm, I'm happy to bring him here. I'm like, yeah. oh, fair, fair enough. And yeah. uh, uh, the following week after I signed, there was um, he goes, take the week off to digest everything, um, and then we'll see you the following Monday. I'm like, yeah, sweet. Um, but there was a dinner on Wednesday, and uh, uh, the football manager Ello asked me if I wanted to come down and meet all the boys. I'm like, yeah. you know what, I will. Yeah. I called up Reno because he's one of my good mates i played <laughs> 20s with him and i i go mate i go can i can i jump in with you like you know i don't want to go by myself yeah. it's like yeah sweet i went back to his and yeah. um saw his kids and his wife and um uh we drove together and funny enough as soon as we get there who's across the road wayne <laughs> and um my my hands are sweaty i'm walking up to this bloke and i'm like oh hey wayne he's like oh <laughs> he goes, oh, we, we, you must be the first lab I've ever signed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, oh, yeah, thanks, nice to meet you too, mate. <laughs> anyway, we go up to the dinner, and then, um, uh, funny enough, who sit, uh, I ended up sitting next to him, so yeah, like, there wasn't that. there wasn't that much chat, let me tell you. But um, yeah, yeah, he, I, I get he he makes things very simple. He doesn't like yeah. to overcomplicate things. Um, old school, obviously, but um, yeah, he's, he's a good man manager and. Um, I guess I would have liked to have a bit more of a longer experience. I think I think guys that have been coached under him for a few more years kind of really got to know yeah. him a bit better. But yep. um, I can understand why people respect him and why he's got that such a he's, was one of the biggest figures in the game. I can totally understand why. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've got another year on your contract. Yep. Um, what's the goal for this year? Is it to just play first grade and get back to being week in week out first grader? 100%. Yeah. yeah, I just um, obviously simple, simplify things. I think uh, the way I come to the club was very messy. I, got, I still obviously had that emotional attachment with Penrith and um, I went through a lot of change. Like I, I obviously after the season was done, I had to reflect on what happened this year. And um, I don't like I come, I come midway through preseason. I only had like probably two solid, two, three solid weeks of preseason. I oh, yeah. tweaked my hammy in yeah. preseason and then um, I played. I, I, I come into the Charity Shield game and I played uh, 40 minutes of that. Um, and then I got picked to play round one against the defending premiers. And um, my first week was a big, big job, you know yeah. what I mean? All going from the left to the right, yep. um, picking up the, like having to learn the defense and attack systems in, in what, five weeks, six mm. weeks. So it was a lot I had to pick up on the run. Yep. And um, 
I feel like I didn't really get, have enough time to kind of you know, get my yeah. body in shape and um, learn everything yep. um, in a, such a short period of time. Yep. Um, got dropped. Um, then I come back, uh, played played for the first uh, for, uh, for the for next four or five games, I think. Mm. Tweaked my other hammy, Far, yeah. missed another four weeks, come back, playing against a red hot Panthers team, yep. my, my old team. Um, that was a very weird week for myself, very weird, um, very weird coming up against them. And yep. um, we ended up getting pumped. Uh, copped a concussion from that game, yep. uh, missed the next two weeks. Uh, don't, I think I don't, don't play for another month. Um, and then I come back. Mate, it was just... It's a weird year. Just a weird, I went through so much change. Like I changed position. I've moved houses, changed clubs. I've, I've, I haven't changed. I've changed position in, in a way. Like I went to. I've gone from the left to the right. Yeah. Um, I've just had so much on my yeah, plate this year, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I tweaked both my hammies, where I've never had. Like, I don't think I've ever tweaked tweaked any muscles before. Yeah. Um. So yeah, man. It was a very very um big year like, yep. it, like I, I just I didn't really adjust to it so yep. for me personally i just can't wait to rip in first day of pre-season yep. um train hard do my best every week every day and um hopefully i'm there round one but we'll see what happens see what happens um ask all the boys this favorite rapper of all time favorite rapper yeah, no favorite. brainer two pack two pack 100 percent. 100 percent. okay two okay. why is that no no just, who's just, yours eminem why Eminem? He's a gun, bro. Oh, he's a gun, but like... He's a gun, man. Yeah, but you got to see the blokes that paved the way for him to come uh, yeah, in. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you look at Big E as well, that. Tupac. But, mate, no one's had as, as longevity as Eminem. And also, his skill set, he's the best. He's the GOAT. Oh, for a question, eh? if Tupac had that longevity as Eminem, because he obviously died at <clears> such a young age, yeah. God rest his soul, but... What would he, you don't know what he could have become. Oh, as well. Maybe, maybe I don't know. But that's the thing. He could have been. Yeah. He, you know what? He could have been terrible. He could have just come out the next year and been terrible. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's true. You don't know. You don't know. You never know. Um, favorite movie of all time. Favorite movie. Yeah. Oh, the Godfather. Yeah. I love the. That's Godfather. That's a classic. I love the Godfather. That's an absolute classic. Yeah, love it, mate. Uh, thank you so so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it, and good luck next year. But uh, thank you, brother. Good seeing you again, brother. Thanks for having me. Boom. Dunskis.